is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of the team. Everything is awesome. When we're living on the dream. Everything is awesome. Oh. <laughs> well, hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. And you're wondering why did I sing that song? Well, I'm actually going to review the film. That was actually one of the biggest animated features that came out just two years ago. It's a movie made out of Legos. Yep, I'm talking about the film, the Lego movie. Yep, and this is the uh, the two disc Blu-ray, the special special edition that was a Target exclusive that I picked up for six dollars at Target, you know, during the Black Friday sales. And it was worth it because I really love this movie. I actually put this on my uh, top 25 list of the best films of 2014. And sad to say, this film was snubbed at the Academy Awards, you know, the Oscars, which is a shame because it should have never been. <laughs> but nevertheless, this movie will always be remembered. And I. I think it's a great film. There's there's no doubt about it. I mean, if, if you love Legos, then surely enough, you, you will love this film. It has all the extras um, on the back right here. Yeah, which includes uh, some new awesome extras on Dix 2. Something that you never thought you'd see before. And, yeah, it, it had uh, some commentary a, new, a brand new commentary which actually has a full frame version of the Lego movie that aired on HBO. It has the Wizard Team Go shorts which actually has an introduction to uh, Wizard uh, Bertrus and it was voiced by Morgan Freeman. They even had uh, How It Should Have Ended shorts. There was only two of them. The Lego movie in 90 seconds. We had just a bunch of kids you know, talking about how it all began and how it went from the beginning, the middle, and the end, all nine seconds. And I got some more deleted scenes that wasn't in the first disc, which had tons of great extras here <laughs> yeah, from the original. And it does come with a DVD, which is okay. But hey, it, it was definitely worth getting that set because um, I love the cover art that they chose. You know, where they just show just a yellow Lego brick that has um, four characters. One is Emmett, the other one is Wild Style. Then you see Batman and Princess Unikitty. <laughs> so this is perfect. Yeah. And yes, the movie was a huge blockbuster hit when it first came out on February 7th. Uh, 2014, yep. A lot of critics were praising this film. I mean, it had a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes, 83% on Metacritic, and was destined to be um, nominated for numerous of awards, except for the Oscars, of course. Yeah, and that was a, a big shame. But luckily, they did build uh, an Oscar statue filled with Legos, so it worked. But nevertheless, um, something I didn't expect to see uh, when it came out. So I was I was actually curious to check it out because I used to play with Legos uh, when I was a little kid. I remember I used to have all these Lego bricks and we started stacking it up together. But I didn't have any of those other Legos um, you know, with those characters. And I wish I had. Hell, I would have loved to have Batman, too. Because <laughs> I know we're getting them, too, already with all the Legos accessories. But I thought it was clever that they were going to make a movie out of it, so why not? And plus, they had all the stop-motion animation, which, surprisingly enough, Lock Entertainment uh, actually did some of the production for this film, too. With a lot of uh, companies. Even though they did do um, CGI animation in the mix. Not to mention this movie was actually based on the um, all the other uh, Lego toys that we had. At this rate, it was it was based on 
the Lego construction toys. And it has an all-star cast too, and they, they provided all the voices of all the characters. So I thought, wow, this is really cool. And it has uh, the writers and directors of 21 Jump Street to, to do this, and yeah. I knew this was going to be an awesome movie. But let's get to it. The movie stars Chris Platt, you know, who went on to do films like Guardians of the Galaxy and uh, Jurassic World. Will Ferrell, Elizabeth Banks, Nick Offerman, Alison Brie, Charlie Day, Liam Neeson. Whole different role for him. <laughs> yeah. Morgan Freeman, Channing Tatum, Jonah Hill, Kobe Smutters, you know, from How I Met Your Mother, and later went on to do films like The Avengers, and Jadon Sam. It's written by Dan Hagerman, along with uh, Kevin, and it's uh, co-written and directed by Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. The movie begins set in the Lego universe. We meet a wizard named Bertrus, who's played by Morgan Freeman, who attempts to protect a super weapon known as the Krago, which is a small tube of crazy glue from the evil Lord Business, who's played by Will Ferrell. But since Bertrus had failed, he decided to create the Chosen One, which turns out to be a person known as the special, which he'll be able to find the piece of resistance, which is a, a red brick, you know, basically what it is, you know, like a battery, that's capable of stopping the Krago. So eight and a half years later, we meet a construction worker named Emmett Broski, who's played by Chris Pratt, you know, just basically spending time, you know, he, he got up from his house, and you know, getting ready for work, you know, while listening to the song Everything is Awesome from his black car, you know, driving around while everybody in the entire town, you know, the whole Lego city is singing along while, um, you know, he's ordering coffee, which was like overpriced, like at $37. <laughs> and he said it was awesome anyway. So anyway, he finally went into the construction site, you know, while they're still singing a song, you know, teaming up together and actually, um, you know, building a, a new building until all of a sudden he across a woman named Wildstow, you know, who's played by Elizabeth Banks, you know, a girl with um, black hair with violet and turquoise highlights you know, with a black sweater who just came by to search for something during the after hours at Emma's construction site but then just when Emma was trying to investigate he accidentally fell into the pit where he actually found the piece of resistance and then when he actually touches it he begins to see a lot of vivid visions and wants up passing out until all of a sudden he was awakened and was captured by a character named Good Cop, Bad Cop. Yep, a two scholar uh, face character who was played by Liam Neeson. <laughs> yeah, hard to believe. He told Emmett uh, on how did he found the piece of resistance, even though he couldn't remember what happened, until all of a sudden Wildstyle had came to the rescue to save him from those cops and that's when um, Wildstyle had decided to build you know a motorcycle and then later a spaceship you know, to escape and that's when they wound up inside a western town where Wildstyle had took Emmett just to go meet uh, you know Bertrus but that's only one problem they were actually master builders and Emmett is just a construction worker who just uses instructions to build things. So they knew that they were convinced about that, even though he was indeed the chosen one. But of course, after he touches the piece of resistance, he did start seeing some visions of other um, characters that actually happened. So 
now that's when we begin to find out uh, later in the film, which I, I don't want to spoil too much of that. But anyway, Emmett, Wildstyle, and Bertrand had wound up being captured by Bad Cop's forces, but suddenly, that's when we finally meet uh, Batman, you know, played by Will Arnett, you know, definitely given that voice, sort of similar to... Uh, you know, Kevin Conroy's voice in the animated series, or in some ways, sort of like the one that Christian Bale used. But it mostly sounds more like the one that's from the animated series. So they wound up being saved by Batman, and they attended at a console of Master Builders where we meet uh, Princess Unikitty, you know, played by Alison Brie. You know, basically, you know, <laughs> a kitty who just um, goes around smiling. Yeah, you know, talking about a lot of cute things, and I know you saw the rainbow. I guess you could tell she's sort of like a uh, um, My Little Pony type of character in that sort of way. Well, you know. And <laughs> yeah, I also love how she also has a a different side of her too, because even though she's mostly perky and cute, and she talks about all this stuff, deep down of it, she also has an evil side too. But I know she's not, uh, you know, a villain or anything. But it's hard to believe that she can actually change a whole different way, but she didn't want to deal with it. But that's when we got to meet all the other characters uh, inside the universe. We got to see some of the Justice League characters like uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, and even the Green Lantern. We even saw um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, as well as, uh, <laughs> yeah, this way we had uh, the Michelangelo. There's also um, the two characters, one from Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, so I know they both got mixed up together to find out those two wizards that they had. <laughs> and I, that that was pretty funny how they made that joke, and then all this other stuff. But then, once again, they're trying to go after uh, Lord Business, which suddenly, you know, they decided to capture all of them. And so he captured every single... Um, Lego character in the universe and already they're planning on actually working together since they already destroyed their land. They decided to escape by going inside a, a boat that they created but of course he did uh, surprisingly enough Emmett had created a uh, a double decker couch you know so that way you know it'd be perfect for them to sit around but yeah <laughs> I thought that was clever because then later on, after the boat started to sink, uh, they wound up inside a double decker couch. <laughs> Toy was already being saved by a pirate and his pirate ship. So, anyway, their, their plan was to uh, Lord Business's headquarters to go after them in order to stop um, Lord Business's evil plans. Meaning that, as usual, he's going to destroy the entire world before goodness knows what's going to happen next. So that's what the movie is all about, and i got to say, I really enjoyed it. It's a, it's a very fun movie. Definitely the perfect film to, to watch over and over again, especially if you're a huge fan of Legos. And why not? I mean, they should make a movie about Legos. I mean, I wasn't expecting much about it, but I thought it was... Definitely the perfect film to watch. Because I know we were getting a lot of animated films uh, that focus on the idea. Yeah, After all, Legos were very popular. I love all the characters that they chose. Yeah, it was really cool to see uh, you know, not only Emmett, Wildstyle, and Bertrand, but we got to see Batman. And I thought <laughs> it was interesting that you know, Wildstyle actually loves Batman because you know, he does hang around. Even though Emmett does, you know, fall in love with her as a love interest. You know, there's also um, some scenes in the movie where whenever they try to think of something, they always show in, you know, a title screen that says 30 seconds later or, <laughs> or like 30 minutes later or any other kind. There was one moment where they actually did play the Double Dare theme song, you know, you know the TV show Double Dare from Nickelodeon. I was like, wow, I didn't know they were going to play that. So I was amazed. 
Yeah. Also, they even had other cameos too besides Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and all that. There was also uh, Star Wars. I mean, hard to believe that they actually managed to have the uh, the Millennium Falcon with uh, Han Solo, Chewbacca, and even Lando. Yeah, and he was, and surprisingly enough, Billy D. Williams uh, did the voice of him. Yeah, and they, they also got the C-3PO in, in the mix and R2-D2. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a funny scene too because Babin was about to to go inside the Millennium Falcon with them just to borrow the hyperdrive. Yeah. <laughs> and I know <laughs> and then when he took it, suddenly uh there was a scene where where the Millennium Falcon was already being eaten by <laughs> that that creature that you saw in the uh, The Empire Strikes Back. So I thought <laughs> well that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I mean there were a lot of funny moments in this movie that I just couldn't forget, and I just, I can laugh at it any time. But it, it was a great moment. But anyway, um, but I, I also love the characters, uh, once again. Uh, I thought Emma was a great choice, you know, considering that he's just a construction worker. But no matter what he is, it soon, we then learned that, you know, that even if he isn't a master builder, he can always um, team up together to uh, work on a new plan and and do whatever he can. Yeah, plus save the entire world um, from the evil Lord Business. So, yeah. Yeah, so no matter what he is, I mean, he'll always be special. So that, that's, the, that's the main message right there, not to mention... No matter what evil stuff that you do, you know, they're always going to be friends <laughs> to the end. I also love Wildstyle, which um, is indeed Emmett's love interest. <laughs> Definitely a cool character to, to have, you know, especially when they work together as a team you know, with Bertrus. You know, Morgan Freeman did a great job playing him, too, even though <laughs> Bertrus came from another side of the universe. Uh, Lord Business, you know, played by Will Ferrell, did a great job too. It's hard to believe Will Ferrell would actually man manage to make a villain <laughs> this evil. Even though in disguise he was indeed the president of the entire city. And yeah, especially with all these uh, <laughs> Taco Tuesdays and all this other stuff. And of course, I, I love the good cop, bad cop character, you know. And Liam Neeson did a great job playing that character, even though this was sort of unlikely for him. Because he usually just plays, like, different roles. But it worked. Yeah, core writers and directors Phil Lord and Christopher Miller must have done a, a great job having to study all the history of Legos in, in order to do this movie. And yeah, considering that they're actually big fans of Legos themselves. I mean, they had to go to all these Lego factories all around. They had to go to the the Legoland theme park in Denmark to study all of this and actually looking at all the old Legos from the past and and all the other ones that they they remember playing with as a kid so wow and of course they had to go to uh, to Bilge Roadshow Pictures in Australia just to work on the movie you know creating all these storyboards you know, already you know all the professionals working on the animation you know, that's done by computers, even though they also use stop motion and all that in the mix. And they provide all the voice actors. So it works. And yeah, and the animation was just spectacular. All done by Lego blocks. <laughs> yeah, all built in. I mean, they must have taken hours and hours and hours to actually build all this from scratch and do all the animation by using the computer animation also with a mix of stop motion so it works so well you know trying to give it a, a 3D effect even though some of it is just 2D in, in a way I thought that was really cool because it seems to me like everything you saw in the movie is all done by Legos <laughs> so that's what it is 
but it was fun. And I also love the song, the Everything's Awesome, even though it has been overplayed to death, you know, sometimes. It was a cool song in the mix for the film. I mean, because I know nowadays they always want to come up with a song that's like a parody of all these other pop songs that we see. So, <laughs> And by the way, the score was also done by uh, Mark Mutterbodge, you know, who's um, the lead singer of uh, Devo. Yeah, did a great job with the music, too. But either way, they are going to have spin-offs. They're also making a, an upcoming sequel that's coming out in 2018, so I can't wait to see that. It's definitely what it is. A movie about Legos. <laughs> yeah, I, and I love Legos. It almost makes me want to buy one already. <laughs> like, buy the whole set. To actually build your own uh, characters and build your own ships and and all that too in the mix. It's just it's just fun. No matter how many colors that they chose. <laughs> it's just perfect. I also forgot to mention there was one funny scene in the movie where we actually get to meet a character, you know, a, a space guy who's just <laughs> bit, you know, cuz he wants to build a spaceship and when he finally got to build one, he keeps saying spaceship Yeah, he was voiced by uh, Charlie Day. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, my throat kind of hurts a little bit when I try to scream. <laughs> but there you go. So yeah, and, and it was a huge hit at the box office. For its budget, it was like $60 million. Even though it was um, going up in a competition with um, Frozen, because Frozen was a huge hit yeah, during the winter season. So I knew this film was going to become... A bigger one. So yeah, it made like uh, 469.2 million dollars. Wow, <laughs> such a huge success. That's why this movie is so fun to watch. Yeah. So yeah, um, definitely check out the Lego Movie if if you're a huge fan of Legos. Or if if not, then hey, it's worth a try. So anyway. I give the movie, the Lego movie, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.